Good morning, Connections. Glad you're here. We're continuing to look back for another few days before looking forward into 2024. And one of the things that comes from faith is a believing that not only does God hear from us in our prayers, but responds to us. Building a relationship with God that that is a an ongoing conversation of his will, his desire, his plans for us, are all things that those men and women of faith have an expectation of. And that's the topic of today. I hope you enjoy it. We'll meet back here for one more look back tomorrow, and then I'll see you on Sunday. And we're going to talk about hope. Hope to see you there. Good morning, Connections. Glad you're here this morning. We are back out at Trout Pond, which is a bit remote, which is what I like, and it's just what the doctor ordered. So thanks for joining me this morning. I hope you're having a great day, and I hope that today will bring exactly what you need from God. That's going to be the theme of the week, and it started yesterday with our conversation about Samuel and Samuel hearing from God. And one of the things that I get asked quite a bit as people start moving towards a relationship with God is, how do you hear from God? And I think we covered a good portion of that yesterday when we talked about Samuel's story and that he was in the right position and obedient to Eli, who was uh, placed over him as the authority. And if we follow in those same footsteps, we have this expectation that God will also work in our lives. How do I come to that knowledge? How do I come to that belief? Well, first and foremost, the passage that we read from Joel, which comes from Joel 2, 28. If you missed it yesterday, it's, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on servants, men and women alike. So that's the promise from God through the prophet Joel, speaking of the in times and what to expect as this world wraps up. Now, question is, is the world truly wrapping up? Well, that's, that's above my pay grade and above all of our pay grades. The only one to know when the end is coming, or the end is here, is the Father himself. However, we certainly can see that there is a need for God. And this is a, a, a season, and as we were talking about Samuel's story, there was a time um, prior to Samuel that there was, God was quiet. And uh, we spoke on Sunday that perhaps that's the quiet before the revelation, because from Samuel on, God did attempt to speak to his people through the prophets. And I pray God will speak through me to reach your heart as well. But Joel's not the only one to speak of the power of God and, and God responding to our needs and responding to our prayers. Jesus spoke this quite a bit in the closing chapters of the Gospel of John. And I just wanted to highlight here in John 14, 12, Jesus saying, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same work I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. So where did we lose touch with God's word in believing that the the miracles, the the 
the power of God faded after the last apostle. That has been the tradition for for many. For you know, that's how we were raised. That that the Bible is more of a history book than than a book where we can uh, relate. More of a, uh, a a book of rules instead of a blueprint to how we might fall follow in the, the same footsteps of those that came before us, that we might be the next Samuel, that we might be the next Paul. And that's what God desires, and that's what God is looking for. So our expectation needs to be that not only will God hear us, but he will respond. And that's what I believe, and that's what I believe you're called to believe as well. In the power of God. One place that as um, part of the Pentecostal movement, and if you're not familiar with the Pentecostal movement, it's a um, movement that began at the end of the 19th century. So that's um, the late 1800s going into the 1900s. That was the birth of the Pentecostal movement, and that was when a a group of believers from all different denominations came together and, and expressed a desire to see a new revival, believing that Jesus was going to return at any moment that it had been 2,000 years and their belief that Jesus would return sometime around that date. And they looked around, as we might look around today, and saying, there's just so many people in need. We need to follow scripture and bring the power of God to bear. And so they looked at the book of Acts and they said, it happened in the book of Acts, why not today? And by applying the things that they learned, by applying the, the same lessons and the blueprint, if you will, of, of how God's hand moved previously, they experienced very similar miracles, very similar uh, uh, revelations as they did in the book of Acts. And one particular story catches our eye right in Acts 2, and that is, on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. So the believers that led the Pentecostal movement looked at that as a blueprint and said, that's what we need, that's what we want. And that's what I'm saying to you as your pastor today is that's what we need, that's what we want. Let's work on pursuing God in a similar way. Now, the hook and the, the link back to the prophet Joel comes from Peter, who now filled with the Holy Spirit, offers this in 15. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago from the prophet Joel. So, Gathering this all up, if you remember Eli calling out Hannah for being drunk. And Hannah saying, I'm just pouring out my heart to God. And then we witness God respond in the birth of Samuel. Here we see the birth of, of the church. And again, all of those gathered around and witnessing this spectacle just assume that the apostles are are drunk and it is Paul that gives the the understanding 
and points back to scripture and says, no, this is what the word of God says. And this is what we should expect when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, when the Holy Spirit is present, when the Holy Spirit empowers us to accomplish what needs to be accomplished in the church. So we begin with hearing from God, expecting that God's going to respond, developing an ear so that when, when God speaks, we can hear him clearly. And then from there, believing that God desires to encourage us and empower us in, in many ways. And so that's the, the path that we're going to follow this week. Of the times when in Acts, where we witness the power of God being poured out just as we should expect. I pray that you will discover that the Bible is more than just a, a, a list of rules, more than just a history book, but that the Bible is our guide for how to relate to, to him, how to relate to our Father in heaven, and how to move forward in our relationship and accomplish all that he has for us to accomplish. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. You are a great God. And you know our hearts and you know our desires and you not only know them, but you hear from us and you desire to respond out of the deep love that you have for us. There's much that you're asking of us, Lord, and it's too much for us to accomplish on our own. And that's where the prayers begin. Lord, comfort us in our time of grief. Comfort us in our time of sorrow. Equip us, Lord, to accomplish what it is that you have for us. Give us the eyes to see and the ears to hear. For your glory and for your honor, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, see you back here tomorrow or someplace nearby. Know that I love you and I miss you. Till we see each other again, please. Be good.